All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless me here talking about real music in real time for a few real people out there just like you and just like me. All right, before I get going with this video, I've been talking about this album even before I got a copy of it. Killer Kings, Burn for Love. This sounds like White Snake, Journey, Night Ranger, and Queen. Yeah, the guitar work has a Queen thing going on. The singer is very David Coverdale-ish. Um, just really well done, well written, melodic rock. There's a tune called Higher. I just can't get the tune out of my head. If you're a radio programmer and you want to put something on the radio just to throw your listeners a curveball and you've been playing, you know, Don't Stop Believing four times a day, um, put this on. I, I don't see how you lose audience by putting something different on the radio. This is in my top five for the year. It, it just is that good. Um, I sent a message over to my friend Alessandro Del Vecchio who produced this album. For those of you who think Alessandro is just cookie cutter and does the same thing every single time, go listen to Killer Kings, Burn For You. Came out yesterday. You know what was cool? I got this on the day it came out, just like the old days when you would go to the record shop, of course. It was sent to me by Amazon, <laughs> amazon.com. Uh, you know, it's a love-hate relationship with Amazon. Uh, it's a business model that works, I, I hate to say. Speaking of a business model, uh, the journey business model uh, is certainly under siege these days. Steve Perry uh, filing a lawsuit telling Neil Sean and John Kane, uh, uh, you can't put those trademarks out there without my consent. Uh, and what's weird about it is the first reaction a lot of people have is why? <laughs> and the first video I did where I went way off into the weeds and talked about how I'm not sure it's about you know, getting profits per se, or uh, stopping John and Neil from earning revenue. I really think that this is more about throwing a wrench in the machinery that is Journey these days. Um, Journey put out this great album, Freedom. You know, I've had a few issues with some of the production values on the record, but uh, I was told, you know, hey, when you record in all these different locations and nobody's in the same room. You just don't have the vibe that you would have uh, on a project like this, where I think everybody is together recording. Uh, you can thank you know, the uh, shelter in place rules and the constant quarantining and the fear and all that stuff for why it may not have sounded as good as it could sound. I think somebody could probably uh, tweak it and remaster it or do something to it. But with all that said, a pretty classic set of Journey music. A lot of people though, of course, on the other side say, look, come on, Dave, this version of Journey, this isn't anything close to the days of Frontiers or Escape or even Raised on Radio for that matter. Um, this is just kind of like a knockoff of what they used to be. And um, some of the critics you know, came out of the woodwork and said, you know, this journey song is kind of derivative of another journey song. Okay, isn't that what it's supposed to be? I mean, you're listening to Journey. Uh, I mean, if you hear a song by Journey and it sounds like the Foo Fighters, right? You should be pulling off the road and wondering what the hell happened to Journey. Uh, I think fans expect Journey to sound like Journey. So it's kind of a dumb argument, but you know, um, Doobie Brothers, best example in my lifetime is when the Doobie Brothers came back and they had this song called The Doctor and everybody was complaining, well, that sounds too much like China Grove, <laughs> okay? And your problem with that is, well, they're just not creative anymore. Well, you know, when you listen to an album, a lot of songs on a particular album are derivative of each other. Hence, it's an album of material. Now, yeah, you can complain, you know, they've already used that piano intro or that guitar riff and so forth. 
but it's like comfort food for the listener. They feel like, hey, this is what I expect this band to sound like. So Journey's putting out really good material, especially at this stage in their career. They don't have to put out music anymore. They really don't. Uh, and that's what's kind of weird is that there seems to be two factions, the Steve Perry, Ross Valerie, Steve Smith faction, who don't really want to put out music anymore. I, I Yeah, I know Steve Perry has a Christmas song, maybe more than one. Um, maybe he's working on new material, but he's not in a rush to get that material out there. Um, whereas, you know, Neil Sean was talking about this Freedom album for like two years, and he was trying to generate excitement, talking about Narada Michael Walden and the return of Randy Jackson. Uh, and that was kind of a big deal. You know, you had this new rhythm section uh, and some people were really excited about it. And other people were like, nah, you know, I've got Escape and Frontiers and Departure and Evolution. I'm cool. I don't need this stuff. I don't need it. I mean, when I go to see Journey, I don't really care about the new stuff, right? And you know what? Unfortunately, that is the mentality. And part of that is because there's no support. The industry itself isn't going to support anything new by a classic artist like Journey. Now, they did cater to Chicago a little bit over the summer uh, and put one of their songs on adult contemporary radio, which was a shocker to me. And I'm thinking, you're going to put Chicago on there, but you're not going to put Journey on there? Um, you know, a lot of this stuff is political. Somebody knows somebody, and then, you know, you play them the song, and they agree, and it's a big network. And if you know somebody within the, you know, the iHeart radio kingdom, right, and you can kind of pierce through the darkness for one song uh, for a little while, and they day part the song, which means they probably play it at two o'clock in the morning, you know, and then they report it like, hey, we're playing the new Chicago song. I mean, the whole industry is just, um, it's, it's gone to hell. And Steve Perry, I think at this stage in his career, he just wants to make some money. That's what this is. There's uh, and the other, but the other premise that I have is he kind of wants to throw a wrench into Journey. You know, there are a few comments out there uh, on Twitter, which is what I call the Brown River. Uh, this is what one user on Twitter says, and I don't think he's artificial intelligence. Now, to come along when Neil Sean finds a way to monetize the catalog for the benefit again of all involved, keep in mind that I don't think Perry was cut into this deal, but Perry is still going to make money because it's a ripple effect. Like when these guys go out on tour, that benefits Steve Perry. I think he's at 12% revenue, right? Of everything they do. That's the number I've heard. Now, if I'm wrong about that number, someone will come along and say, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Steve Perry gets a cut. Neil Sean has said Steve Perry gets a cut. Um, I don't think Neil Sean likes to talk about that, but yeah, that's the deal they made in 1998. And that was a deal that really favored, um, Steve Perry. It just did. If they were going to be able to carry on with that name, the deal was all about Steve Perry. It was breaking away from Perry. It was giving Perry. I mean, this band had this attitude all along. Yeah, Steve. We'll sign the contract before we do the show in Hawaii, just so as long as we can do the show. Um, that story, too, it, it kind of dovetails with all this stuff like um, holding these guys hostage. Yeah, sure, you can crack the stone, but you're not going to be the same without me. Yeah, Arnell, he's singing his heart out every night, but I'm not complimenting him on his great vocals. There is a difference, by the way. Uh, when you say to someone, you're a great singer, or uh, it's like patronizing, oh, he's singing his heart out. He's, it's like a little kid, oh, he's doing the best that he can. You know, it's difficult for him, but, you know, nobody can really replace what I did in the band. Now, he didn't say that, right? So I'm not trying to put words in Steve Perry's mouth, but the whole thing to me sounds like trying to hold it hostage, trying to throw a wrench into it, trying to make it more difficult for this company, because that's what it is. It's a corporation. 
We wrote you out of the corporation. You are no longer a shareholder in this corporation. We gave you the greatest golden parachute in the history of rock music. Now, can you just leave us alone? We decided that we were going to trademark 20 songs. Nope, can't do it. Now, we'll see what the courts do with this. They might side with Perry. They might side with Kane and Sean. We don't know. I'm not a legal expert. Again, at some point, I'm going to try to have somebody on the show who understands this kind of stuff, copyright law and trademarks and who's in the right. And uh, if you write a contract and you forget to put in a certain portion of it and talk about trademarks and all that, does that mean that you know the next contract, if it comes along and you want to include that, that the prior contract doesn't mean anything, you know, because you forgot. It's kind of like forgetting all the different revenue streams and then, oh yeah, yeah, we got this other revenue stream. Uh, we can, you know, trademark all this stuff and Perry can't have anything to do with it. And that's what the fight is about. Does Perry get a right to this stuff? Does he want to share in it or does he just want to stop it? See, I bet you these guys would be more apt to just settle with Steve which is crazy, but they probably settle with Steve and say, look, if you want a portion of this revenue, that's fine. Um, I'm thinking that they just discovered a new way to monetize the band, right? And Steve Perry doesn't want them to do it. So, all right. Everybody apparently likes these videos. They tend to go viral when I talk about the journey thing. And I don't want to talk about it every day. I'm getting messages all the time. Like, yeah, I saw your video. Do another one. Like, okay, sure. Um, anyway, <laughs> here are the killer kings. This is the, the best part of this video, sharing this amazing album with people who uh, do like to move forward and hear new stuff. Burn for Love, courtesy of Frontiers Music. My buddy Alessandro Del Vecchio doing the production. He's such a good guy. One of the nicest people in the business. Gets a lot of crap. Um, but, you know, when he hits a home run, he hits a home run. This one here. Um, you know, he's not singing on this record per se. He might be doing some backup, uh, background vocals. I think he's playing keyboards. Um, phenomenal record. If you like queen, white snake, night ranger and journey. So, uh, there you go. If you're tired of the feuding and the fighting, you can go listen to killer Kings. All right. I'm done folks. And I will see you soon.